Okay, so this is the video demo on prepping finalized photographic images and printing from the Epson 5000 printers we have here at DePaul University. So we're going to walk through a few of the steps of what you're going to do to finalize your JPEG for printing and then I'm going to walk through the actual printing settings that you want to have engaged before you send your document to the printer. So first off, I have opened in Photoshop my exported JPEG, which I've already added all of my edits to in Lightroom prior. So I've exported this as a high resolution JPEG. I have all of the pixels I possibly can, and I'm ready to get started. So the first thing that I always want to compensate for when I'm printing is just because the image on the screen looks a little bit darker than the uh, or it looks a little bit brighter than what we're going to see on the darker print when it comes out. I'm always going to compensate for that difference by going into my adjustment layers over here on the right. And I'm going to add a very light curves layer. This curves layer is going to add just a pop of light to compensate for those differences. So to do this, I've uh, added that adjustment layer on top of my background layer. I'm going to grab just the very middle part of our graph here on the histogram. And I am going to pop this up just a tiny bit to make sure that I've compensated for a little bit of added light. Now, as you can see, I've selected a pretty dark image to work with already. So I know that um, if my image is dark in the first place, I'm going to want to add a little bit of this curve to it. Um, I might also pull in my black point, which is located over here on the far side of the histogram, just a notch or two to make sure that I have some nice even saturation with my darks. Just doing that, if I turn my eyeball off and on, you can see the bit of difference that that makes. Now obviously, if I don't want that curves layer to apply to anything else in the image, I can always mask out part of it by utilizing my brush tool. Um, I can grab my brush by grabbing it here on my side effects and tools panel, or I can hit the B keyboard shortcut, which pops up that brush tool. And I'm actually using my bracket keys that are underneath my delete button here to make that a little bit bigger. So if I wanna brush out some of this area, I need it to be the dark area that I'm brushing. So I hit X to invert my foreground and my background. Now the, you see the black is on top. So if I don't want that curves layer to necessarily affect these brighter highlights in my piece, I can always just simply brush those out while I'm on my layer mask. Cool. In most cases, you can keep it as is. Um, I just have particularly bright highlights here that I'm working with. What we really want is just a nice pop of light into that printed image. So once I've added a little bit of light, what I'm gonna do is unlock my background layer and I'm going to hold down my shift key, select both layers, control click on both or right click on both and I'm actually gonna merge these layers together. I already know that instead of a JPEG, this is going to end up being a Photoshop file. So these destructive edits will be assumed because this is going to end up as my print version of this file. And that being said, because we've made some destructive edits here, let's go ahead and save this as a Photoshop file right now in our print folder. So I'm going to go over to File, Save As. Save on my computer because I want this to be on my external hard drive. I can always go back to it. I'm going to pull out this window. Um, I want to have my for print folder ready to go. I'm going to save it in this print folder as a Photoshop file. Um, and we're going to call this the exact same thing. But I'm actually just going to put print in the title so I can differentiate it from my regular JPEGs and anything else in my exports folder from Lightroom. Uh, so then I'm going to hit save and now I know up here my file name is now officially a Photoshop file. So I'll grab back, uh, grab over to my um, regular selection tool or I can hit V as a keyboard shortcut there. And the next thing I want to do in addition to that pop of color is I want to add just a a, t a tiny, tiny bit of sharpening to um, this main layer. So I'm going to right click 
on my layer panel here, I'm going to duplicate the layer and I'm going to name this layer sharpen so I know what it is, especially if I reopen this file or maybe I print it again in the future. So once I have that sharpen layer duplicated, I can come up to my filter tab. I'm going to scroll all the way down to other and even if even if it comes up at the top later on, don't use this shortcut. Always go to filter other and then go to high pass. Filter other high pass. Always find it from this window. Now typically <laughs> it's going to give me um, a pretty intense radius to get started. And what I'm looking for is just that tinge of sharpening that happens between about a radius of two and three pixels. So this is an advanced sharpening technique that is looking for areas of contrast in uh, the way in which contrasting pixels are sitting next to each other on the image frame. So if I'm looking at somewhere between two and three pixels, I wanna see that moment right where I have a little bit of that um, image contrast, but I certainly don't want to be able to make out all of the contours of the full piece. So in my case, I'm gonna go with about 2.1 pixels. Something to mention is if you're printing a portrait, a picture of a human, it's okay to leave that softer and it's okay to not add the sharpening layer because we want a nice soft presentation. You might be totally fine. If you are printing images of more rigid content such as architecture, the built environment, um, objects, adding a little punch of sharpness is never a bad idea. So I'm gonna hit okay. The last thing we need to do to the sharpening layer is add a blend mode to it so we can actually see the original image with the way in which the sharpening has been applied on top of it. So where it says normal right here in my layers panel, I'm going to change that to one of three possible blending modes. Overlay is kind of my middle ground. Soft light is going to be the lesser application. It's gonna be a little bit less intense. Hard light is the most intense. I hardly ever use hard light unless it's um, an architectural thing that really needs to be punched up quite a bit. So I think in my case, I'm gonna use soft light. And we're really gonna see the difference that the sharpening makes if we command plus to zoom in a little bit, turn that eyeball off and on, and you can kind of see how those areas of this brown paper really have a bit more definition and less fuzziness to them when I'm zoomed in. Again, we don't have to go overboard with this. And in fact, even if the soft light is a little bit too intense for you, you can always change your opacity down to like 61 or 80% um, based on what looks best. But you'll always see those differences the most when you're really zoomed in on a detailed area of your print. So let's go ahead and save Command S just so that we have our progress here ready to go. And now what we need to do is kind of run a quick diagnostic and make a decision about how big this image can be printed at maximum, and then decide for ourselves how big we want to print it for presentation. So in order to do that, I'm gonna come up to image, and I'm gonna to go to image size. And this is gonna give me my diagnostic of how big I could potentially print this picture. It looks like uh, at 300 resolution, I could print this at 19.2 inches total by 12.8 inches total, which is a pretty decent printing size. If you open your image and the resolution is set to 240, I need you to change that to 300 because that's gonna match the highest resolution print quality of our printer. So let's say this is set to 240 what I would need to do is first say, all right, how big do I want my image to be? Well, I know that my maximum width is 17 because our uh, Surecolor Epson P5000 printers can print a maximum of 17 on the short end uh, and they can print however long on the long end. But let's say I want to make a smaller print here. So maybe my width will be 14. I'm gonna type in 14 we're gonna make a smaller print here and my height automatically scales. I definitely don't want to change the height because that could end up stretching the image and because these are already linked, once I change and determine my width or my longest edge here, everything else will kind of um, follow suit. If my resolution isn't set to 300, all I have to do is uncheck resample. I'm gonna type in 300 
resample, you know, that kind of threw things off here. Let's make sure we're at 300 and we're at 14 and then um, height automatically scales and I can hit OK and what's going to happen is that image is going to get a little bit smaller from how it was scaled originally. Now just if I wanted to print a really big image or a larger scaled image like this I'm going to hit command Z to just show you what I would do for that. Let's say I want to utilize the full 17 inch width of my piece. I like to think about my photograph in exactly the same um, uh, rotation as what I would see it if it's coming out of a roll-based printer. So what I'm going to do is actually rotate that image. So I'll go to Edit, Transform, and then I can rotate it 90 degree clockwise if, for example, I... Oops, that actually rotated my sharpening layer. I need to hit um, <laughs> Command Z. And if I do rotate uh, after I've added this layer, this is a good one to show you, I actually am going to need to merge these again. So we'll merge them for now. Edit, transform, rotate 90 degrees. And that rotated the entire image. So um, what I'm actually going to do instead of that is image rotation and that's going to be our 90 degree clockwise that we actually want to use. So ignore that. We're going to do our image rotation 90 degrees clockwise and now you won't make that same mistake. So now our whole thing shifts over. We are good to go. So if I wanted to print it really large, um, I can go to image, image size, and I know that my width can be a 17 inch maximum. But I'm not going to put in 17 because I always want to have a little bit of room on each side to be able to hold that print once it's come out of our printer. So I'll say 16. I could print this essentially at a maximum of 16 by 24, which is a really, really big image size. If I did that, I could hit OK, and then we will be ready to go. Now, I think I'm going to stick to my smaller print because I know I need to print 10 of these, and I'll keep it simple. I'll hit Command Z and we'll go ahead and size it to our original 14 inches by 9.3 at 300 resolution. So I'm going to remember these numbers or write them down. Um, I know I'm printing at approximately 14 by 9, 14 by 10, and I'm going to hit OK. And again, I'm making sure that resolution is set to 300. I am ready to print. I'm going to go to File, Print. And I need to make sure that my printer is set up to the Epson P5000 series. I'm going to make one copy and I'm going to clip, click on my print settings to make sure that my paper looks like it's the correct size. In order to get my full dialog box to show up, I'm going to click on that show details button. And under paper size, I'm going to immediately go to manage custom sizes. Within this window, the first thing I need to do is hit that plus sign and it's going to give me some options to customize the actual height and width and margins of my final piece. For width, no matter what, this is going to be 17. Typing this in as 17 will always ensure that your project is centered and you don't have to worry about anything else. Even, you know, had I gone with the larger print size, I know that my picture is going to print out at 16 inches, but putting in 17 inches for my paper size ensures that my extra inch is spread out equally. Uh, so I have a half inch on either side for holding it. I have that little bit of a margin around the outside. I know that my actual image height is 9.3, but if I want a little bit more of a gripping area on that print, I'm going to go ahead and make this 11. I'm going to not only round up to 10, but add an extra inch so that I know I have a solid, like a little bit less than one inch on both sides for holding it. And then because I've set my margins already by doing the math, <laughs> I'm going to change all of my margins here to 0, 0, 0, 0. And then I'm going to hit OK. While I'm in the print dialog box, there's two other windows that I need to check out and make sure they're set up correctly. The first one, if I click on where it says layout here, is my printer settings. 
Here, I need to make sure that it is not set to sheet borders, but rather if I'm printing from the roll paper, I need to have it set to roll borderless auto expand. Then uh, I need our media type to be premium luster photo paper 260. Our print mode is the Epson precision dot, the super photo for 1440 DPI. This all looks great. So that's the first window I need to check. The second one is my roll paper settings where I just want to make sure that it's set to normal cut so that I know it will automatically cut when it exits the printer for me. From there, I can hit save. And I should see over on this side, I should see a little bit of a preview window. Oh, it looks like I put one inch instead of 11 inches. So that's a good one to go back and check. <laughs> we'll manage custom sizes. Boom, 11. There we go. If it doesn't look right, remember to go back and change it. I want that to be 17 by 11. And now if I hit save, there we go. There's my full image ready to go. Color handling, I want to set that to Photoshop manages colors. And then for printer profile, this is very important. Make sure that you have this set also to Premium Luster Photo Paper 260 so that it matches the printer profile that we've set up in our print settings window. Normal printing is great. Rendering intent should be set to relative colorimetric for photographic works. And I want black point compensation to be checked on. Um, sent, it should be centered, so just make sure that that center button is checked under position. And those are the basics. From there, I am ready to go ahead and hit print. And what I want to do is just keep an eye, make sure that our ink looks good. I'm not getting any effects of banding as that's going through the printer. And very shortly, I should have an awesome print. So that is the demo. I hope that, that this helps as you are working on creating some really beautiful, punchy, outstanding photographic prints. And as always, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I'm happy to help. Thanks.